Hey, hey, Waffle Gang, I do hope you're well. My name is Mark, and today we're checking out some more r slash matter butthole. And if you love a Reddit story, please consider hitting that like, subscribe, maybe that notification bell too. As I always say, it hugely helps out the channel, and I can never express how much of a difference you really do make. So please consider it. <laughs> and let's crack on with today's stories. Much love, guys. Now, our first story comes with an update as well, and it's from The Bad Dad, who says, Am I the arsehole for accusing my daughter's mother of making me a deadbeat? So I, 44 male, am fairly well off. I'm high up in the company where I work, and money's no problem for my wife, 33 female, and our two kids. When I was 17, I wasn't the type of person that you'd want to be a father. My own father was a terrifying presence. I almost flunked high school. My high school girlfriend, Sophia, left me after I got held by the cops one night, and in a double whammy, she moved to Scotland with her dad for university in Edinburgh. Sophia was pregnant and never told me. She never kept in touch. I wasn't looking her up in Scotland. I feel like I had the right to know. Ironically, her leaving made me get my life together, and I did very well in university. Sometime when we were 18, she gave birth to my daughter. Well, Anessa knew who I was and she decided to contact me, telling me I was her father. Sophia and Anessa had moved back to the country, different city, and I flew out to meet her. I saw a picture of her after she contacted me. She looked just like my mother, so no need for a DNA test. I avoided seeing her mum and I spent all the time I could with her, getting to know her and learning all that I'd missed. Here's the kicker. I gave my kids the best possible life, but she struggled her entire life. After Sophia's dad died, they had a bad time in Scotland and even briefly moved with her mum to Russia. They're doing good now because my Ines has got a great job in the same field I started out in. It made me mad. I could have provided for her. She could have gone to the fancy schools that my kids go to. She could have got her new shoes, clothes, games every birthday and Christmas. She didn't even have a father to teach her how to drive. I didn't even pay child support. It makes me upset I didn't do right by her. When I met her mum again, it was tense. I laid out everything I wrote in a calm manner and my daughter made me leave as her mother was going to cry. I met Anessa the day after when I left and we've talked every night since, but we haven't brought that up. My wife told me that I was an asshole to tell her mother that and demanded I apologize, but I couldn't help but feeling like I wasn't wrong. However, a few days ago, my wife told me she's pregnant and she talked to me about the situation in terms of what if I passed before my child was born. And since then, I felt like a major asshole because Sophia did a much better job with Anessa than other single parents I knew like my own father. And there's a lot of varying opinions on this story, so I want to try and get a couple of extra comments in here. So, before we go to the update, of course, with Heather Kiwi, who says, Might get down votes, but you're the asshole. Think about her perspective. By your own admission, you said that you weren't the type of person someone would want to be a father. You were failing school and being held by cops. She was young, pregnant, and most likely scared of her future. It took her leaving to get you to decide to get your life on track. I know being told that you had a daughter was a shock, but would you really have provided for her being a teen dad? Apologize to them and just make the most of what you have. You now have the opportunity to spend time with your daughter. If you keep harping on the past, then you will hurt your daughter. Princess Row 123 says, this is tough and while I empathize with your situation, I think you're the arsehole. You're focusing on your rights and what happened in the past instead of how to build a relationship with your child going forward. Fighting with her mother over what she should have done when she herself was a child is not going to make things better for Inessa or anyone. Ulu replies to that comment saying, what are you talking about? If genders were reversed here, this would almost be considered a kidnapping. He has every right to wish he was part of his daughter's life and to know her existence. The mother may also have her reasons, not saying she made the absolutely wrong choice, but shutting out a father from the life of his daughter was still a choice she made, and these are the consequences. Crystal Flood says, not the asshole. she kept your child from you. What the fuck is wrong with these comments? She intentionally kept your child from you. Years of their life, you'll never get back that you never get to see. I'd be raging at that mum. She's cruel. Commercial Doubt 985 says, Slight you're the arsehole. I feel like you haven't taken your ex's perspective into account as to why she didn't want to tell you. 
The way you describe your past self shows that you didn't seem to be very trustworthy and she couldn't have anticipated that you would end up getting your life together and become well off enough to support them. Also, I understand your hurt about the situation and think you're reasoning and acting from a place of hurt, which is why I think you're only slightly the asshole. You should apologize for the sake of moving on. If you say Sophia did a great job raising Anessa all on her own, then let bygones be bygones and be there for your daughter now. Royally Oki says no one's an asshole here. This is a very complex situation for everyone. Sophia must have had her reasons at the time, but from where everyone is right now, it doesn't matter. Seize the present and work on the future. Be happy that you're in a position to do your best right now. Marianne says no judgment, just a piece of advice. You need to build on the relationship with your daughter now that you know about her. I have no doubt you would just like to scream for hours about it, taking so long for you to find out. You've done very well in life. Go see a therapist to work out your frustrations. Right now, your relationship with Anessa is fragile and new. Don't risk it with anger at her mother. Then kiss your wife for being amazing. I wish you all the best. Overdictor asks, Info, did Sophia have reasons to believe you were dangerous? To which OP replies, Not me, but around our neighborhood, my father was always kind of a bogeyman. He wasn't conventionally powerful or anything, but he was cruel, kept bad company, was abusive to me, and always made Sophia feel uncomfortable. I think me getting held by the police kind of said to her that I would be no better than he was. And one more from Wooden Pitch, who says, It seems very reasonable that you were mad at the ex. I can definitely understand that. You have to realize, though, nothing you say is going to change what happened. If anything, I would apologize to your daughter for upsetting her. You just wished you knew about her, but you'll try your best to be okay with the situation. Her mum raised her all her life. Don't make her be in the middle of the drama. Not the asshole with stipulations. Good luck. Sounds like a tough one. Now, we're going to move on to the update to see how it all pans out and hopefully we get a conclusion to this. So, update. I figured that I'd post an update since I've met with my daughter Anessa and her mother Sophia again. I went to the city that Anessa lives in for a business trip and she agreed to meet me. I went to Sophia's home and took the time to talk with Sophia while Anessa was changing. I did what most of you and my wife recommended and apologized to Sophia. I told her I was hurt I couldn't be there for her and Anessa, but that she did an incredible job. Better than I would have been able to do before I got my life on track and I admire how much stronger than me she is for doing it all despite all she faced. This brought tears to her again, but thankfully she hugged me and forgave me. She then apologized to me for not telling me when I was older, but it was that at first she was afraid of my father and later on she didn't want to disrupt my life. I told her it didn't matter and all that matters is Anessa and her happiness. When I went to dinner with Anessa, I gave her an old photograph of my mother as a gift and she thought it was some old timey photo of herself at first because they look so similar. I told her about my own terrible father and why it hurt me so much that I didn't get to be there for her because I had this notion that it's a father's duty to always help his child, guide them, teach them and love them and they're a failure if they weren't. I told her I was sorry, I made her mother cry, but know now she was a better mother and father to her than I could have been at the time. She also forgave me, and when she called me dad, she had just been saying father before, which was still adorable because of her mix of Russian and Scottish accent. For the first time, as she hugged me, it was the best feeling in the world. Although I'd booked a hotel for the night, Tanessa insisted I stay with her and Sophia. We wound up staying for hours watching old home movies of Anessa as a kid, which she converted into digital from tape somehow. And even though I couldn't be there for any of that, I do feel better about it. Before I left, I promised Anessa that I'd always be there for her and if she ever needed anything to ask me and I'd take the flight to see her that day. When I got home, my wife told me that I did the right thing in apologizing to both of them and that I should see her for Christmas and that our kids would be fine without me for once. So I thank you guys for recommending that I apologize. It feels like a weight has been lifted and I can be there for Anessa without regrets. And I think that's an absolutely wonderful update. As updates go, you know, a sad situation that's turning into a positive one. Absolutely fantastic. And before we wrap up on this story, I just want to point out how wonderful, you know, OP's wife is in the situation and caring as well. I don't know why I felt the need to point that out, but I thought I would. <laughs> and I'm sure you noticed it already as well. Anyway, let's move on to another story.
And our next story also follows with an update and it's from a name I cannot pronounce, but will be on the screen. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay my husband money? I recently got married. Before H31 male and I25 female got married, he wanted me to stay at home while he worked since he works a great job. If I wanted to work, I could use my money for my expenses. I worked before the wedding, but with wedding planning that I did alone without help of H because he didn't want to and working 70 hour weeks, it became too much, so I quit. Mother-in-law lives with us six to 10 months out of the year. We'll move in with us when father-in-law retires. She is emotionally and mentally draining, but H is a mama's boy and believes his mum is always right. I did most of the cooking and the cleaning, etc., but the credit always went to her and H would tell me to do better. Then H and mother-in-law started to tell me to start working because I had too much time on my hands and it wasn't as if I was doing much in the house since mother-in-law took care of everything. Again, I did most of the work, but credit went to her. If I told H that I did it, he wouldn't believe me. Before we got married, H and I would go out, had date nights, but now even if I ask to get a coffee, he refuses. If I ask to go out for dinner, he'll say no, but when his sisters in their 30s ask, he instantly agrees, paying for them and their families. Before we got married, H told me he'd pay me a monthly allowance to cover any expenses I had while I stayed at home, but after we got married, he claimed that money was tight, so he couldn't. Since I had bills and loans to pay off, was unhappy at home, was constantly told by mother-in-law and H to start working, I decided to work. Mother-in-law went back, so I now work and do everything in the house, while help taking care of his niece since his sister lives with us. I do most of the chores. I asked H to help around a little, but he says that he's too tired after work. He works from home while I don't, and that if I expect him to help out in the house, I need to start paying him half the mortgage. I refuse because I'm only asking him to help a little. He lived alone before we got married, so he is capable of it. Plus, we went over this before the wedding. He keeps demanding that I need to start paying half the mortgage since I live here for free and work regardless of whether or not he helps out in the house. He is very comfortable with money, not struggling at all. He also gets money from father-in-law monthly. I do all the chores, do all the cooking, buy things for the house, furniture, decor, and necessities because mother-in-law wouldn't let me when she was here. I also pay for two mini vacations we took while he claims that him paying for the honeymoon was more than enough. I make less than a third of what he does. I'm rarely consulted for decisions in the house. In-laws and H make all of them. I already do more than what we agreed to before the wedding while working. I don't think I need to pay him anything. Am I the asshole for refusing to pay him half the mortgage? Reading a lot of these stories has taught me a lot and it's one of the things I'm always thankful for when reading these stories. I learned so much about, you know, the way relationships work and the way people work and stuff like that and, and the way people use money and stuff to control one another. So the first paragraph was setting me off straight away that he wanted you to stay at home, which, you know, is absolutely fine in most relationships, but OP wouldn't be here if there wasn't something wrong, right? So that initially put me on high alert straight away. And before you got married, you were told that you would have like an allowance, but now you're being told money was too tight. Whilst apparently he goes out with his sisters and agrees to pay for them and their family. So, and I'm pretty sure where the, I know where the comments are going to go with this one. You're absolutely not the arsehole in the situation. I'm going to be very interested to see what the update says on this one. But Fork Shirt Up says, Lady, I am drained from reading your story and I couldn't even get to the last paragraph. You need to run. Conscious Excitement says, why are you with him? I see no redeeming qualities. Sparrow says, not the asshole, but I don't know if I've ever seen so many red flags in a single post. Surely you saw something before the wedding. Don't pay him, save your money and get out. Starry Knight says, not the asshole. You should start a savings account and get out while you can. Hungry Industry says, not the asshole. Why are you still married to him? Stinky Pickle says, don't have kids with this man. It's only going to get more toxic. Tell him exactly how you feel. And if he's willing to step up and treat you like an equal, start from there. If not, get out as fast as you can. Not the arsehole. And the comments pretty much just continue down this path of why are you with this person? How did you not see the red flags, etc., etc. And, you know, like I said before, we send many posts like this. And I think we have to remember, obviously not everyone, but when people are in these some of these relationships, they get gaslighted so much that they start to question themselves. Like this person in this post was told that they would have an allowance before the wedding. Then straight after they're told money is too tight. 
it sounds like they went over like chores and paying the mortgage before the wedding and now that's changed as well so it must leave you questioning and and turning to places like this to ask this question so op's new post says hi everyone i didn't expect such a response i'm overwhelmed but also thankful to you all this isn't really an update but rather me answering some questions people have one, I didn't go into a relationship knowing this side of him. He was very different and had a lot of charm. He hid this side of him very well. He became a different person right after we got married and I was taken back. There was essentially no honeymoon phase except the five days when we went on our honeymoon. Four, I've also shared this with my immediate family and they support me if I leave. Five, my family told me that these were red flags. I wanted an anonymous second opinion because I didn't know if my family was being biased or not. Six, it was arranged but also not. I was set up by a friend who was married into his family. I suppose she didn't know this side of him either. Seven, I was told by many people that the first years of marriage are the hardest. I doubted myself about whether these were red flags or just things I was supposed to endure. 8. No, I didn't know how much of a mama's boy he was before we got married. 9. I've suggested counselling before, but he became defensive saying counselling makes things worse. 10. I was afraid to leave because the road ahead seems difficult and I didn't have the courage to face it. 11. I also haven't left yet because I don't know what my breaking point should be. There's so much more I've gone through. I won't say it yet to remain anonymous, but I'm afraid to face defeat. I didn't realize how wrong H and his family are. I've been thinking of leaving for a while, but I think this definitely helped me make up my mind. I'm going to get my finances in order before doing anything else though. Now, what do you guys make of this one? Let me know your thoughts in the comments below and we'll move on to another story. And our next story comes from a throwaway account who asks, am I the asshole for not wanting my fiance's friend in our wedding party? My female 26, fiance, male 28, have been together for four years. He's been friends with Maya, female 30, for six years. They're fairly close, but she doesn't like me much. It's usually not an issue. Some people just don't mesh. We don't mesh. Edit to add, there's no heavy animosity. We can be near each other fine. We just don't talk when we are. We don't actively hate each other, just prefer not to hang out together. She isn't against us getting married and likely would say yes to being a bridesmaid to make him happy, but isn't pushing for it herself. We're recently engaged and he'd like her to be a bridesmaid. I don't. He wants her in a dress matching my bridesmaid on my side, participating in things we are doing. I said absolutely not. She doesn't even like me. I've seen wedding photos where one bridesmaid clearly doesn't want to be with the bride and I don't want that. Plus, I really only want the woman closest to me as bridesmaids. I suggested she wear a black dress to match the men's tuxes and be a groomsman. He said that will look dumb and he doesn't want to do that because he's dead set against including her on his side with the men and their activities and I'm dead set against having her with me and my bridesmaids. He said I've effectively said she can't be in the wedding. I argued he's just as much at fault for not budging as I am but he said I'm the one being unreasonable. Mind you, his only reason for not wanting her with a groomsman is, that's dumb, just let her be a bridesmaid. Am I the asshole for not budging and basically keeping her out of the wedding party, according to my fiance? Not the asshole to me, you know, this is his friend, so in some ways, his responsibility. And it's not like you've said, no, she can't be in the wedding at all. You said she could be even on the groomsman's side if you want to. You, you offered a compromise where he's just going, no, that's just a dumb idea. <laughs> absolutely not the arsehole in this situation and i know you say that you can stand near each other you know and there's nothing too crazy about the relationship but you don't want to be even the slightest bit uncomfortable in your wedding is you and your husband's special day why would he want you to feel even the slightest bit uncomfortable you know she can be on his side the options there take it or leave it up to you husband but the kelsey 21 says not the arsehole is his friend she should be on his side maybe he's trying to force this on you to make you two get along but that's such a bad idea that definitely won't work don't budge op till way says not the asshole his friend is his responsibility not yours he accuses you of saying she can't be in the wedding as if you aren't allowed to not want her in it as if it is a bad thing to not want her in your wedding party 
girl, you're absolutely entitled to not want her in your wedding. She doesn't like you, you don't like her. Why would you be in the wrong about not wanting her? Don't argue the point anymore. Say outright that he's right, you don't want her in your wedding party. So he can either invite her to be a groomswoman if he wants her in the wedding party or shut up and stop pestering you. Edit to add to the people who don't get context. OP doesn't want friend in her wedding party. Friend is more than welcome to be in the groom's wedding party or just attend as a guest. Nina instead says, not the arsehole. See if she can do a reading, give a toast or participate in another meaningful but non-attendant way on the big day. She is not bridesmaid material. Just here for the tip says, not the arsehole. I don't want to project, but my ex-husband made a similar demand and spoiler alert, we're divorced. Not because of our wedding party, but speaks to character. Jane Wilson 90 says not the asshole. she's his friend, not yours. If he wants her to be involved in the wedding party, he can have her on his side. If he thinks it'll look dumb to have a woman on his side, he can have her do a reading or be involved some other way. And one more from Crafty Like a Fox who says not the asshole. speaking from experience. My sister-in-law asked me to be a bridesmaid years ago and I felt obligated to say yes. We're fine with each other, but same as you and Maya, we just don't mesh and aren't friends. I was uncomfortable at every event. I say that because it's really unlikely Maya wants to be a bridesmaid anyway and really wouldn't like coming to all the bridal events, just like you don't want her there. Stand your ground and don't feel bad. It's his friend and I highly doubt she cares. He's being weird for pushing this so hard on you. Makes me wonder if he already told her to expect the invite, which would make him a double asshole. Ooh double arsehole. But what do you guys make of this one? What would you suggest in this situation? A huge thank you for spending your time with me today. Getting involved in the stories, the comments, the likes. Please like if you haven't already. Hugely helps out. And there is a playlist on your screen right now that if you click, it will scroll through the videos for you and super helps out the channel too. Thank you so much for your love, your support and your time. And I will see you in the next one. Take care guys. Much love.